he did the next today may get up to 112. So stay safe the next couple of days. <clears throat> Thank you for your financial support of the church. Contributions may be mailed to the church office if you're unable to make it to worship. You can also contribute online on our website. Next Sunday, we will have worship at Milan Beach Resort, Lakeside Worship at 930 with six churches joining together. All are welcome. Bring a lawn chair, invite others to join us. So 9.30 next Sunday. Rally Day and God's Work Our Hands Sunday will be September 8th with noon lunch provided. So come and help. A congregational meeting has been scheduled for Sunday, September 15th at 9.45 in the sanctuary following worship to discuss and vote on the landscaping and structural repairs to the east side of the church and by the bell tower. And today, if you don't feel like cooking, there's a benefit brunch at the Appleton VFW until 1. It benefits the Appleton Firefighter Relief Association. Are there any other announcements? Our opening hymn is When Morning Gilds the Skies. In today's gospel, many take offense at Jesus' invitation to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Even many of Jesus' disciples peel off. This is the backdrop in John's gospel for Peter's confession of faith. To whom can we go, asks Peter, in words we sometimes sing just before the gospel is read. You have the words of eternal life. In order to take such a stand as Peter and Joshua did, Paul tells us to arm ourselves with the word of God. We pray in the spirit that we might be bold ambassadors of the gospel. Rich, did you try unplugging the camera? And plugging it back in, I don't know what else to do. <clears throat> Let us pray. In the beauty of this place, we have come to pray, to worship, to receive healing and hope. We come from the struggles and triumphs of the week, needing to feel the soothing presence of God. 
Lord, be with us this day. Calm and soothe our souls. Cause us to rejoice that you have provided a special time where we may gather to talk of your presence and love, to sing your praises, and to be empowered to go forth to serve you. Amen. Amen. Because God is near to the brokenhearted, let us consider how we have lived, confessing our sins and trusting in God's mercy to save. God, God of, of our, our redemption, redemption, we confess that we have not, have not been faithful, been faithful servants. servants. We have we not have served not you with, with sincere heart, hearts, nor trusted, trusted in your salvation. salvation. We, we have forsaken, forsaken you, you, the living the God, God, and have, and have chosen, chosen to follow, to follow the, the lifeless idols of worldly, worldly power, power and wealth. And wealth. Forgive, Forgive us our sin, O oh God. God. Lead, Lead us to heartfelt, heartfelt repentance that, that we, we may honor you with our lips and serve you with our, with our lives through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ himself is the word that offers eternal life to all who receive him. This proves his love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise is praise and thanksgiving. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> and also with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Holy God, your, your word, word feeds, feeds your, your people, people with life, life that, that is, is eternal. eternal. Direct, Direct our choices and preserve us in your, your truth, that, that renouncing what, what is false and evil, and evil we may live, we live in, you, in you through your, your Son, Son Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the first lesson comes from Joshua 24, 1 through 2a and 14 through 18. In the Near East, covenant means agreement or alliance. It describes relationships and is the primary word used to characterize the relationship between God and Israel. By delivering Israel, God has already begun the relationship. Joshua calls upon the people to respond. Beginning at verse 1. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God and Joshua said to all the people, 
Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. We'll read Psalm 34, 15 through 22 responsibly. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and God's ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to erase the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from every one. God will keep safe all their bones. Not one of them shall be broken. Evil will bring death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. The second lesson comes from Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Like a general giving a rousing speech to troops before battle, this letter closes by calling on Christians to be equipped for spiritual warfare against evil. The full armor of God includes truth, righteousness, peace, faith, the gift of salvation, and the word of God inspired by the Spirit. Beginning of verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you'll be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication, so that to that end keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known that bold, with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, pray that I may declare boldly as I must speak. The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. <clears throat> Glory to you, O Lord. The hard saying that offends Jesus' disciples is his claim that his followers must eat his flesh and drink his blood. The followers who return to their old lives know something about how odd this sounds. Simon Peter, on the other hand, knows something about the scarcity of living. Gracious words, he asks the most important question, to whom shall we go? Jesus said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. 
Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were compl complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Life is all about making choices. We make many choices each day many of them mundane but necessary. Will I get out of bed or hit the snooze button on the alarm? Will I have cereal for breakfast or make bacon and eggs? What clothes will I wear? What will I make for supper? How will I spend my evening? Our scripture decks today are about making choices. From the first lesson from Joshua, choose this day whom you will serve. And Peter's question to Jesus in the gospel, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Today, thankfully, is the last of five weeks of gospel readings from the sixth chapter of John. I chose most weeks to preach on one of the other texts. Since Pentecost Sunday, I've chosen to use the alternate semi-continuous first lesson in Psalm. We have heard stories of Samuel and Saul and several stories of David. Now those lessons shift into poetry and Proverbs, which aren't as interesting. So I've chosen to switch back to the complimentary first lesson in Psalm, which complement the gospel reading each Sunday. And today is a good Sunday to do that because the first lesson from Joshua contains the well-known verse, Choose this day whom you will serve. This declaration of Joshua comes at the close of the book by his name. Israel is entering upon a new stage in its history. The future holds both promise and danger. Now in its own land, Israel has the unprecedented opportunity to become a people formed by God's law. Israel was to be a people ruled by the God who liberates slaves, champions the poor, the widow, and the orphan. Israel is to model the way of being human that God intended from the beginning. It was being given the opportunity to become an agent of blessing to the world, as was promised to Abraham. The story takes place after God's people have finally entered the promised land after 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Back in this time, for God's people and all people living at that time, there were many gods, small g gods, not the big gods. G God. Every locale had its own favorite god or gods, the ones who were thought to look out for the interests of the local people in war, in agricultural pursuits, and in other aspects of daily life. Before the call of Abraham, the ancestors of the Israelites worshipped the gods of the place they lived in the year of the Chaldeans beyond the Euphrates River. In Egypt, there were still other gods, so that when Moses receives his revelation at the burning bush, he must ask, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? 
Now in Canaan, which has yet more gods, they have seen that God has delivered on the promises to the ancestors. Will they now serve this God, the God of Israel, or cling to the gods of the past? The question here is not only about belief, but rather service. See what the Lord has done for you? Now, how will you respond? God, through Joshua, does not demand intellectual agreement. Instead, God demands a lifetime commitment, a willingness to order one's life according to God's law. Joshua frames this decision in terms that remind me of the Bob Dylan song, Gotta Serve Somebody. Everyone's life will be driven by the commitments they have made. It will not be enough simply to claim an allegiance. That allegiance must shape the actions of their everyday lives. Joshua says, now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua leads this litany and invites the people gathered to remember who God is, who they are, and what God has done and will do for them. It's similar to when we profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. Joshua commands, Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Joshua recounts where God's people have been and even hints at where they have perhaps fallen short. And then he invites them to respond. Whatever their response might be, Joshua makes clear, but it's for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. This proclamation of service is key to discipleship. It's one's response from which the rest of one's life as a disciple follows. Joshua leads by example, inviting others to consider their own lives. The people answer, and in so doing, they recall God's saving work out of Egypt and the wilderness. They respond that God protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed, and the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. People are committing or recommitting to their relationship with God and each other and joining with Joshua. Together they affirm the covenant between God and the people, Israel. Just as we might gather and worship each week, and particularly as we look to what the year ahead might involve, we commit to God and one another. We are in this together, and we are here First of all, because of God's deep, abiding, and abundant love. We are invited to respond. But the question then becomes, as Joshua asks the people, how will we respond? Will we do so with fear and trembling? Will we do so with doubt or insincerity? Will we do so with hope and trust? With joy, praise, and gratitude? That seems to be the question put forth this week. To this question, Joshua leaves no doubt by saying, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. From this response then flows our discipleship and stewardship. But what about you and me? Would we be so bold to declare this? And if so, do we know what we might be getting ourselves into? Did Jesus' first disciples even know and understand half of what they were getting themselves into? Peter gives us a good example of this in the gospel story today. He's all in, much like Joshua is all in, on following God. Because Peter hears Jesus declare, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Jesus' words bring life. Peter knows this deep down within himself to be true. So Peter responds to Jesus and in so doing offers the words of our own response. 
Peter asks and professes the words that countless Christians have said in response to the gospel ever since. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Or as someone translates Peter's question, Lord, the alternatives are not good. <clears throat> Discipleship involves a, a willingness to risk, to follow, and to respond. Let us be so bold as to echo Peter and to join in as disciples and stewards. Let us be so bold as to respond and serve as Joshua. Let us be so bold as to risk and to follow wherever Jesus may be leading, to come and see that the Lord is good, to pay attention, witness, and wonder what new things God might be inviting now and inviting us to see join in, commit to, and respond to in the days and months ahead. At its heart, this text is a call to discipleship. <clears throat> Disclaimer, as Lutherans, we believe that God chooses us long before we begin giving thought to choosing God. <clears throat> Both the words of Joshua today and in the words of Jesus in the gospel, we are told it is ours to choose. Oh, yes, with Joshua and Peter, we do choose who we will serve, who it is we will follow. This being so, I thank God every day that God made the ultimate choice for me first. Because of this, all my choices every day are made under benevolent cloud of grace. Indeed, we have before us now essential question for people of faith, and so it is vit vitally important to keep it before us. For while God did choose you, us, you and I are called to choose how we will live out the joy of having been so chosen. Shall I, shall we live, in the, live it in the hope and love and promise, or shall we not? Either way, what will that look like? Amen. <clears throat> Our hymn of the day is Blessed Assurance.
We profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe, believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of, of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. I, I believe, believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only, only Son, our Lord, Lord who, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under, under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, died, died and was buried. He descended, <clears throat> descended into the dead. dead. On, On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. <clears throat> Holy God, you have the words of eternal life. Lead the church to put its trust in Jesus, the living word. Direct all the baptized in faithful speech and bold witness. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Creator God, bless fields and pastures. Help us to take care of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. We pray for an end to war and conflict, especially in Ukraine and the Middle East. <clears throat> Merciful God, <clears throat> receive our prayer. God of wisdom, as our nation navigates another election cycle, guide our leaders to act justly for the sake of the world. Bring about fruitful conversation among your people and to bring about change where you see fit. Merciful God, <clears throat> receive our prayer. God of restoration, bring healing and wholeness to all who cry to you. Where there is pain, bring a sense of comfort and relief. Where grief runs deep, bring your tender mercy. Today we pray especially for Bob Running, Ken Kittleson, Dave Hastings, Myrna Keel, those undergoing and recovering from surgery and medical tests and procedures, and those we now name in our hearts. Be close to the hearts of the lonely and comfort those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of all, we pray for those who have no one else to pray for them. May they sense your light, love, and grace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of new life, protect students and teachers for a new school year. Bring an end to school shootings and cycles of violence. Move us to do all that is necessary to ensure a safe future for our children. We also pray for wisdom and learning for Nelly Ngama and Navolio Sithol, students in South Africa, as they attend school. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of every generation, we remember with thanksgiving all who have completed their baptismal journeys. Strengthen us in our baptismal callings to serve you faithfully until our journey's end. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. Please rise if it's comfortable for you. <clears throat> the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. You may share a sign of peace with others as you feel comfortable. Peace, Judy. Peace, Rich. Peace, I. Peace, John. Peace. <clears throat> peace. You may be seated. The ushers will now receive the morning offering. <clears throat>
Let us pray together our offering prayer. <clears throat> Almighty God, God, we dedicate, we dedicate ourselves, ourselves to serve you, you for you, you alone are our God. God. <clears throat> Receive, oh God, the, God the, gifts the gifts we offer, we offer and with, with these, these gifts, gifts accept the offering, offering of our lives through, through Christ in the power of the, of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and, and the power, power and the, the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, you have chosen to serve God because God has chosen to serve you in Jesus Christ. Go, therefore, to love and serve as God's people in the world. We go, go in, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. You may be seated. Uh, God is always with you, even when times get difficult and the way is not clear. God is truly by your side. Rest in God's strength and love. Serve God with joy. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is, O oh, Jesus, I have promised. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <clears throat> Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you for coming today. Have a good week and stay cool and safe. <clears throat>